So my my uh, daughters are home from college, and I just heard an alarm go off. So <laughs> we might uh, get to see one of them. Uh, it's a really trying time right now, being quarantined, and my daughters are very outgoing, extroverted, and it's difficult for them to be stuck inside at this time, as it is for all of us. Uh, and so last night we started talking about positives. Instead of what we cannot do, what can we do? What has this opportunity opened up for us? And, you know, it might be something simple like, well, now I have a little bit more time to practice a new recipe, or, you know, I might not push myself to, to do a lot of the workouts that we've been doing uh, at home with my girls. Um, it, maybe it's nice to not have to put on a, a, a really snazzy outfit every single day. And of course, we want normalcy, but just making a list of things that we're thankful for, making a list of things that we can do instead of we cannot do, really will change your outlook during this time. Even if it's just something so simple as, I had my family together, <laughs> it's, it changes the way that you're going to see everything. Uh, if you still feel like this whole coronavirus is a pain in the backside, well, we're going to open it up today as we um, stretch out the piriformis muscle that oftentimes will create pain for the sciatic nerve. So I want you first just to come to a comfortable seated position. It can be whatever you are most comfortable with, and I'm using a bolster today, but if you don't have one, a little pillow or a little block or book underneath you is nice. You might not need anything at all. But I'd like for you to go ahead and close your eyes. And this way we cut off any external stimulus. So it's easy again at home during your practice to think, oh, I have to vacuum this. Oh, I need to wash this dish. Oh, have I paid this bill? It's a lot on us. There's so many distractions. So by closing your eyes, you're able to go inward a lot faster. So with your eyes closed, let the weight of the body drop down into the earth, claiming your space. Really check in with your body. What do you notice today? What feels different in your body? And that could be something as you slept funny and have a crick in your neck. Maybe you drank coffee really fast this morning and burned your tongue. Maybe you stubbed your toe. Maybe you're dealing with issues with an uh, injury in your shoulder, your knee, your back. Maybe you're experiencing a little sciatica today. And it's not that we're wanting to dwell on anything negative or what hurts or what's bad. We want to make friends with this body you've been given. Always checking in. So your best friend, you, you might be calling them your, your best friend up. Hey, how are you doing? What are you going through? What are you dealing with? Why don't we do that with our bodies? So ask yourself, really check in. What do you notice that you're dealing with physically today? Allowing the weight of the body to drop into the earth. Again, just claiming your space. And it feels so good to be solid, to take up space, to be able to move. Notice the weight of the legs and the heaviness of your hips, your bottom. A lot of times with sciatic pain, any pain, we tend to tense around it. Sciatic pain will tend to tense up the glutes to try to protect ourselves. So when we practice tight asana, uh, it will actually make sciatica worse. So we want to soften and be heavy at the backside. From here, I'm going to ask you to engage Mula Bandha, our root lock, lifting through the pelvic floor so you're trying not to use the bathroom. And it's not that we're trying to squeeze as hard as we can, just that little bit of an elevator lift and that little muscle awareness. Not only will this strengthen the pelvic floor, lifts the bladder, it gives us a little bit better focus and balance and makes everything we do uh, on our mats a little bit easier, but everything we do the rest of the day a little bit easier if we just engage that little pelvic tilt or that, uh, that mula bandha lifting through the pelvic floor. 
Now we add the little pelvic tilt with our Uddiyana Bandha, our navel walk. So you're going to scoop the tailbone under just a little bit. A little reverse crow sit up. Drawing the lower tongue a little closer to the spine. And your navel inward and upward. And of course this is not sucking in as hard as you can. It's just that little bit of an awareness. So from the waist down, we're heavy. Lengthen upward. Growing your spine longer and roll your shoulders back and down away from the ears. Maybe sliding your hands from the knees to the hips so that we broaden through the collarbones, the heart is open. We have more awareness on your upper back. Keep your chin just parallel to the floor and retract it so that your ears are in line with the shoulders and allow the base of the skull to get heavy. So now we've created so much space that we can fill with breath. So taking full deep breaths here, I want you to add a slight constriction at the back of the throat, the ujjayi pranayama. And we talked about this Friday. So it's as if you're cleaning your glasses. If your mouth were open, it would sound <sighs> If your mouth were open and you inhale, it's a reverse uh, sigh or slow gasp but you keep your lips closed to protect your throat. Staying connected to the sounds of the breath. And the sounds of the breath is what's gonna ground our emotional body. <clears throat> Taking a moment here to create an intention for the rest of your practice. What is your focus? What do you want from this hour? And again, it's easy to get distracted. Your dog might come in, somebody might flush the toilet, phone will ring. Can you stay connected to the sounds of the breath? the weight of your body. Can you stay grounded? Just you go ahead and bow your head towards your heart? Feeling the length in the neck running down the spine. Blossoming at the back of the heart. You can take the right ear to the right shoulder. Bringing your chin back to your chest. Left ear to the left shoulder. And chin to chest. Bringing your head back upright. Again, roll your shoulders back and down away from the ears. I want you just to lengthen your spine and you're going to lean to the right. Press your left leg away from you. So we're getting a little bit more space in through the hip, the waist, the side body. You're going to come all the way back to center. Lengthen through the torso. Lean to the left as you press your right leg away from you. Full deep breaths here. Staying connected to the weight of the body, the sounds of the breath. We're going to come all the way back to center. Let's go ahead and again create that space in the side body as you lift up. Let's take your arms up like an early morning stretch. Remember, if your shoulders are tight, you can keep your hands wide. If you're okay, you can bring your hands together. If your neck feels kind of off today, keep your chin just in line with the floor. If you feel okay, we'll look up. Bringing your hands back into the heart. Again, just taking a moment to be thankful for what we have, what we can do today. I want you to release your arms. And we're going to come into uh, the Nadi Shadnu, sweet breath, alternate nostril breathing. Okay. So what I want you to do is to take your peace fingers on your right hand. You're going to touch your forehead. Your thumb is going to close off the right nostril. Your ring finger and pinky will close off the left nostril. Okay. 
So what we're going to do is just to exhale fully. Close off your left nostril. Inhale through the right for a count of four. Three, two, one. Now hold at the top. Just hover. Exhale left. Hold at the bottom. Two, three, four. Inhale left. Two, three, four. Hold at the top. Exhale right. Two, three, four. Hold at the bottom. Inhale right. Hold. Exhale left. Hold. Inhale left. Hold at the top. Exhale to the right. Hold at the bottom, just hovering. Inhale right. Hold at the top. Exhale left. Hold at the bottom. Inhale left. Hold. Exhale right. And hold. Just one more round. Inhale right. Hold. Exhale left. And hold. Inhale left. Retain. Exhale left right. Releasing your hand into your lap. Eyes are closed. Notice how your body feels. We've just balanced both sides of the brain. This also creates more symmetry throughout the body so that we can really focus on what's going on on one side to the other. It also brings more focus to our practice. So again, bringing your hands together in front of your heart, bowing your head, taking a moment to bless your body for what you're able to do. Blessing the situation that we're in. Though it might be out of our control, we can find things to be thankful for. Taking the right ear again to the right shoulder. Bringing your chin back to your chest. Left ear to the left shoulder. Bringing your chin back to your chest. Taking your head all the way back up and one more we'll inhale, all the way up. Let's take the right arm just alongside the body and we'll reach up and over, lengthening through the side. Inhale to come all the way back up, tall as you can. Left arm to the floor, right arm up and over. We'll inhale to come all the way back up and slowly release. So from here, I'm going to ask you to straighten your legs. Flexing your feet, so we come into Dandasana, staff pose. You might even move the fleshy part of the seat back so that we feel that we're sitting upright on the ischial tuberosities, the, those sits bones that push down into the floor. And again, we might have a tendency to want to slump. We want to fight that. Push straight down to lift your heart and maybe even push your hands into the floor trying to get even taller, shoulders back and down. Maybe you lift up slightly without lifting your bottom up off of the earth. Let's see if we can hold this. Lift the pelvic floor strong and we'll take the arms up. So we're gonna open up the hamstrings and the back as we lift up and over, fold and close like a book, bringing your belly towards your thighs. You can stay here, maybe taking your hands to the floor, to the shins, to the ankles, or to the feet, wherever you're comfortable. But you're gonna to begin to close the book. Folding, let your head hang at the end. 
We'll inhale, raise your face, your chest, coming all the way back upright, and we'll release. From here, I want you to bring your right knee into your chest. Okay. Just give it a little hug, a little squeeze, wiggle on your toes. And I do want you to check in quite a bit today with your knees. I want you to cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Okay. Starting out, you're going to keep your foot flexed. That will protect your knee. Lifting your heart, taking your arms up again. So the feet are flexed, work active. You're going to reach it up and over, folding. So, of course, this is different than it was before. We're still really feeling the straight leg on the bottom. So we're opening the hamstrings. But now we're starting to get a little hint happening in the hip of your right leg. So again, you're just going to fold. Well, inhale, raise your face, your chest to come all the way back up. And exhale, release. Now, from here, same thing, but we're going to move your right leg further over to the left. So I want you to think about trying to bring your knees one on top of the other. We're not bringing your foot all the way to the hip. It's just out to the side. So you're making an L shape with your legs. Foot stays flexed. Inhale, lift your heart. And we'll exhale again. Fold. And again, you're going to feel your bottom leg. So it's a happy hamstrings today. But again, we're starting to wake up what's happening in the hip and in the glute. You can hold onto the floor, your calf muscle, your ankle, or your foot as you fold. Surrender. Still taking full deep breaths. Now, from here, we're going to add a little bit more. Raise your face, your chest. You can release your arms, but you're going to take your hands over to the right. I just want you to take your left arm to the outside of your thigh. Give it a little push. So even though technically we are twisting, I'm really wanting to get into that hip and into the glute. So the piriformis muscle is a very small muscle that runs across the backside. Now, even though, okay, sure, that sounds good, the sciatic nerve runs through it. So when this muscle is jacked up and it gets really tight, it's going to choke the sciatic nerve, which causes sciatic nerve pain. It'll run down the leg, up the back. It's, it makes for a very unpleasant day. So this is something that you can do to kind of um, prevent it or to start to heal it. We're gonna come right back to center. From here, you're gonna take your leg and release. Shaking it out, we'll switch sides. Bringing your left knee just into your chest. Hug it tight. Checking in, noticing how this feels already. Are you tightening up your glutes while you're here squeezing your backside? See if you can keep them soft. Crossing your left ankle over that right thigh. Holding here, <laughs> tall as we can get. Now, I don't, uh, I can't see everyone, so I don't know your levels. And it might be that your hips are super tight. So if your knee is up like this the whole time, that's okay. Let's say that we could even just hug it in. Do the same effect. As long as you can feel it, you're doing it right. Okay. If you're a little bit more open and you're comfortable, we're gonna take your arms again all the way up. We'll begin to fold forward as long as your knee the ball says it's okay lift your heart and exhale we'll begin to fold again we can come out a little bit further you can hold on to your calf muscle your ankle or your foot and you're just going to melt down well inhale raise your face your chest coming all the way back up and we'll release, taking your leg further over to the right. So we want to bring your knees one on top of the other. <clears throat> Already there's a lot happening. And again, if you are super tight in your hips and you are here, this is okay. Just think you're trying to push your hip into the floor. Lifting your heart. Again, we're going to come forward, reaching out, holding on to your calf muscle, your ankle, your foot. And again, we're not after trying to create a beautiful shape. Your, your body's already a beautiful shape. It's not getting that picture-perfect magazine shape. How does this feel in your body? You're the one that has to live with it. 
So we could try to be super competitive with ourselves. I'm going to force my body into this. Then we're going to have an injury, maybe your knee, maybe your back. So we don't want to force the body into anything. Just sit with it. Be happy with where you are. Yes, we want to have control over everything that we're doing. But we also want to be find what we're thankful for, what we can do instead of what we cannot. You slowly come back up, taking your hands to the left your right arm to the outside of that left leg, and you're just gonna kind of push it away from you. Spine is long, just want you to feel a little bit more on the back side. Starting to wake up. Getting a piriformis muscle. And we'll slowly release. Coming back to center. Okay, extend the legs, we'll inhale. And exhale, close like a book, folding forward. We'll inhale, raise your face, your chest to come all the way back up. And we'll release. Okay, so now we're going to play a little bit deeper. Now that we're trying to open everything up. Matter of fact, go ahead and lean back and rock your feet in and out. So it's like, what do you want to do today? I don't know, what can we do? <laughs> what do you want to do? Some yoga. So we can feel the femur just rotating in the hip socket. I'm just gonna go ahead and come back up and we're gonna lie all the way back. So once we're on the floor, you can walk your shoulder blades back away from your hips. I want you to bring your right knee again into your chest. Just hug it tight. And you're gonna cross your right ankle over your left thigh. We've already done this. From here, you're going to reach your knee away from you towards the, the center of your mat or towards the front of it. So we feel that little bit of a pull throughout the hip. We'll slowly release. Now this is something that might be very familiar to you, just a little figure four. You're going to use your core, lift through the pelvic floor, press your middle lower back into the earth as you bring your knees towards you. Again, keep your foot flexed, it'll support your knee. We could stay here. Or you can reach through, grab and hold of your hamstring. Shoulders drop. You could stay here. Or extend your left leg. Now again, we've already opened the leg a little bit. It might not be super open, that's okay. So you might stay here. Or you can take your hands to the calf muscle. Maybe bring your chin to your chest with your shoulders. You might come up to the ankle. Just drawing the leg towards you. There's so much space happening around the backside, the hamstring, the hips, lower back. You're gonna slowly release, bending your knee, taking your foot back to the floor. Now, again, we did this Friday. We're not gonna do anything fancy, just taking everything over to the left. Arms out to the sides. And again, this is still waking us up, so we're getting a little bit of gentle, and we're going to sprinkle getting uh, uh, more and more deep into the practice. Full deep breaths. Scoop your tailbone under to come back to center. Let's take your foot a little bit higher up on the leg. So you might reach up. Maybe your flexibility only allows you to come halfway. Maybe you can come all the way up to the hip. Again, it's what's best for you and what your boss says, the knee. You're gonna reach that knee just a little bit away from you. You can hold on to that foot the whole time. And we might just stay here and call it a day. Or we can extend your left leg, get a little bit more uh, mobility, range of motion as you reach your knee towards your foot. Maybe taking your right arm up and overhead. So we're getting a little pull in the shoulder. Feeling a lot happening in the hip, the outer thigh. Full deep breaths. Lifting through the pelvic floor, scoop your tailbone under. You're going to bring your leg in. <clears throat> now, we can stay here. Be reaching for the shin. Drag it in. It's a little bit different, figure four. Full deep breaths. You could stay here. 
or extend the leg. Holding on wherever you're most comfortable today, bringing your chin to your chest. Foot still really high up on the leg or really low, depending on your, your orientation. We'll slowly release. Now from here, again, you're gonna take everything over to the left. So your arms are out to the sides and we're just gonna twist. Now, reach your right knee away from you. You could even push it away. Just feeling that space in the hip. Full deep breaths. And slowly release. Scoop your tailbone under, coming all the way back to center. Release your left foot to the floor. And here's the best part. We're gonna release your right leg to the floor. And just pause for a moment, because we're in such a hurry to get from one thing to the other. It's so nice just to get that feedback from your body of what just happened. There's so much more space in that whole right side. So we're going to bounce that out. Left knee coming into your chest. Hug it tight as you can. You're going to take your left ankle over your right thigh. Start think, for just a moment. You're gonna think about your knee, reach it away from you. Very small, just targeting through the piriformis muscle. Full deep breaths. We'll slowly release. Lift through the pelvic floor, scoop your tailbone under, bringing your knee towards you. Flex your foot, keeps your knee safe. You can stay here or reach through, grab and hold of your hamstring and hug it. Oh. So we can stay here or we can extend your right leg. And it might be that you're here and you think I've done, this is as far as I'm going. This is okay. If you're comfortable, want more, you can reach for your calf muscle. Maybe for the ankle. Remember, only do what feels the best for you today. Nobody can see you. You're at home. Maybe bring your chin to your chest, lifting up. Draw the leg closer to you. Creating a lot of space in the body. Again, check in with your knees here. Even though it might be, oh, my hip feels so good. If your knee is not happy, stop immediately. You're going to slowly release, bending your knee. You're going to take your feet to the floor. Now, take everything over to the right without doing anything fancy. Just feel in that space and soften. Once we come over, let go of that control so we're not pushing anything. Just being heavy. Full deep breaths. Lift the pelvic floor, scoop your tailbone under you, come all the way back to center. We're going to bring your leg higher up. So you can reach for your foot. Maybe it only comes a little bit higher up. That's okay. It might be that it comes to the crook of the hip. This one's my tighter leg, so I don't go as far. But he wants you to reach your knee away from you. You can stay here the whole time. This is good. Or you can extend your right leg. Maybe even taking your left arm up and over. We're getting a little pull on the right shoulder. Full deep breaths. One more inhale. Pressing your lower back into the earth. You're going to bend your knee. Maybe bringing your leg in. You can reach to grab hold of your shin. Just squeezing it in. Stay here. Or we'll extend the leg. And we'll reach up wherever you are comfortable. Full deep breaths. We'll slowly release. Bending your knee. You can stay here. Or take everything over to the right. So we're just a little bit higher. Once that left toe touches the floor, we can start to release your right leg. Reach your uh, left knee away from you. And we can even add a little push to it. So again, 
we're feeling that all through the outer thigh, the hip, maybe even a little bit into the backside, not super, super much. We'll slowly release. Scoop your tailbone to come back to center. And here's the best part. Release your feet one at a time towards the floor. And pause, really taking in, receiving that information that your body's giving you. Even if your body's saying, please stop, <laughs> you want to take that in, listen. Hopefully your body's saying, ah, there's so much more space now. You stopped glinching. From here, you're going to bring your knees just into your chest. You can cross your ankles. You can roll to one side and push up, or we'll rock up. Ah. Nice tall lines. We'll inhale, and as you exhale, again, lean to one side. Press the leg away from you. We're going to roll forward over to the other side. Push the leg away from you. We're going to come back to center, rolling it up. Now, from here, your dominant leg is most uh, likely the closest to the groin, so you're going to leave that there. So I'm right-handed, so my right leg is going to stay put, but my left leg is going to sweep around. Now, the way that will look, I'm just going to lean to the right, left leg comes all the way back and around for a pigeon pose. If this is a little too much for your knee, you can bring it in towards the groin. The further out we bring the foot, the more you're going to feel it. So come forward so you can see. We're going to inhale, lift your heart. Right hip is back. Left hip, again, drags forward. And we're going to fold, lower the belly, the heart, the head. Scoop your table in order to come back up. And again, we're going to fold, belly, heart, head. And we'll roll it all the way back up. Okay, now from here, we're going to do something that can be a little scary. So you can stay right here if this is what you prefer. From here, what I'm gonna do is just to flip my knee back. What? So I'm gonna keep my heel kind of close to my hip, just like we were doing when we were on our back. And I'm just gonna take my knee back and then fold, okay? Now, even though you've seen this from the front, huh, what did you just do? Let me turn around. So again, we start in pigeon. Keeping your foot in place, bringing your knee back, and fold. So it's just like what we were doing uh, on our backs in a supine, but now we're prone. Shoulders are back and down. You might even bend your back knee. We can stay here or reach back. Get a little pull. Now, are you tightening up your backside? Can you soften? I want you to slowly release. You're going to push your hands down and forward. You're going to lift up, sliding back. Now, right now, your ankle is crossed over your thigh. Okay? So we're just going to stay here. I want you to think of your knee trying to push it back behind you. Okay? We're going to test to make sure that your knees feel okay, your hips feel okay. So come into a cat and cow. As you inhale, drop your belly, looking up. And that stretches out the backside. Exhale, round your spine, chin to your chest. Again, inhale, drop in your belly. And round your spine. What is your body telling you? Is it saying, okay, I'm okay. You can go further. Then we'll go ahead and come up. Now, this is a super modified horse. Your body automatically wants to turn to the side because that's the easiest for us. Right hip is forward, left hip pulls back. There's a lot going on at the back side of the hips. Bringing your hands to your heart. Let's make a crown. And we'll reach it up. Maybe if your shoulders are tight, your crown is really big. Scoop your tailbone or looking up. 
I want you to bend your elbows back behind you. And we'll release. And we'll scoop the tailbone under coming forward. Now, from here, we're going to take this leg, sweep it up, maybe give it a little kick and back to center. Oh, and you're just going to rock your hips from side to side. Okay, so we're going to come to that pigeon on the second side. So your left leg is going to come forward like you're crawling. You can keep the heel close to the groin or take it out further. But your right leg, you're curling your toes under, propel yourself back further. Pigeon. We want to feel that back hip flexor. Right hip forward, left hip back. Lifting your heart. Belly comes down first, then the heart, then the head. Scoop your tailbone under to come it back up. And again, we're going to fold all the way down. And scoop to come all the way back up. Now, from here, push your hands down and forward. You're going to slide it back. And we forgot to flip over. We're going to do that. Don't worry. Taking your thigh, reaching it back behind you. Make sure that we don't catty corner the, the torso. Bring it forward, right hip back, left hip forward. We'll make our crown and reach it up. Full deep breaths. Bring your elbows back, hug the back of the heart. And we'll come forward. Releasing your arms. Let's go ahead, come back to that pigeon and we're gonna flip over, okay? So you're keeping your heel close to the hip, your thigh, you're gonna reach it back and fold. So again, you can stay here or bend your knee. And maybe we reach back to grab hold of the foot. We'll slowly release. Press your hands down and forward. We'll come back up. And we're going to pop this foot out to the side. Maybe give it a little shake back to center. And rock from side to side. Now, we're going to go into that again a little bit higher. But before we do, drop your hips to the side. And then just swing your leg around. Now, we want to keep your hips grounded. So you've only got your ankle uh, on the outside of your leg. Pressing your hips down. You're gonna sit very tall, feeling that pull again in the hip. Lift your heart. Full deep breaths. A little bit of core. You can take your arms back and switch legs. Hips, anchor, pull the leg into your heart, lift. Feeling that pull again at your backside. And we'll slowly come up in easy seated position. Lift your heart, walk it out. You slowly come back up. Okay, so from here, we're gonna shift forward to all fours. From here, we're gonna come to a downward facing dog. So turn to the side. You're gonna curl your toes under, pushing your hips back and up. Downward facing dog. Taking your right heel towards the sky. Hamstrings. Let's go ahead. Bend your knee, bringing your knee forward so that you're in kind of a plank. You're going to reach it right back up and coming forward. Let's take your knee again towards your hand. You're going to propel yourself back for pigeon one more time. Lifting up on the tips of your fingers, trying to drag your back leg in. And we'll fold. Scoop your tailbone under to come back up. From here, we're going to crawl back again. So you're going to push back. Ankle is still in front of the knee. However, this time, 
I'm gonna grab hold of your foot, bringing that heel higher up on the leg. Again, same thing that we did when we were laying down. Now, if you're super tight, it might only come up a little bit. It might come up higher from the front. Make sure that your knees are not super far apart. We gotta test before we come up to make sure this is okay. So inhale, drop your belly, looking up. Oh, there's a lot in the backside. Round your spine, chin to your chest. <laughs> and we'll come right back to center. Now, it might be that you just decide, I'm gonna stay here. Or drop your foot back down to where we were before. If you are comfortable, we might hold on to the foot. Coming up. Make sure we don't rotate. We wanna to come to center. Picking your right arm up. Give yourself a pat on the back, because this is a weird position. And we'll slowly release. Push your hips back. From here, so we're gonna do a fun transition. So you're gonna curl your toes under on that back leg. We can walk it back just a little bit, lifting up. So we have a dog in a tree from the side. <laughs> from here, we might slowly start walking back. You can soften your stabilizing legs should you need to. We're gonna slowly start to come up. What? Keep your heel high up on the hip, reach your knee low. And if your leg is lower, that's okay. But you're gonna take your arm all the way up. Full deep breaths. Maybe pat yourself on the back. Maybe soften your stabilizing leg as you hinge forward. Folding. So again, this is something that we did when we were on the floor. So we know we can do it. It's just weird here. And from here, we might walk ourselves back out to that downward facing dog. Coming up on your tiptoe. Gently lowering down. Maybe reaching your hips back. What do you notice about your body? Is it screaming? Is it calling me ugly names? <laughs> you can come back up, slide it down, and maybe wiggle it across. Oh. Oh. Rocking from side to side, so good. Okay. All right, so from here, let's go ahead and again, cross your ankles, maybe sitting back. Pausing. Lift your heart. I'm going to lean to one side. Press that leg away from you. We'll come forward to the second side. Push the leg away from you. You're going to come back to center. Roll it up. Are your knees healthy? Taking your legs out. Maybe rocking in and out. Your hips happy? Is your back happy? And we don't want to force the body into anything. From here, we're going to come back to our downward facing dog. So it might be you swing your legs around. You might rock forward and up. Turn to the side. So you're going to curl your toes under. Lift your hips. Downward facing dog. Left heel towards the sky. Hamstring. Bringing your knee forward, scoop your tailbone under. Inhale, lift. Exhale, scoop. Inhale. This time, as you exhale, you're gonna bring your knee towards your hand. So we come back into pigeon, reaching it back. Lifting your heart, we'll fold forward again. Scoop your tailbone under, roll it back up. And folding forward again. And all the way back up. 
Noticing how your body feels. From here, we're going to push the hips back so that we've crossed. Now, again, you could just stay here. One side is always different than the other. This might be your side that gives you a little trouble, so you stay down. Or we can grab our foot, bringing that foot higher up on the leg. And again, this is my tight side, so I don't go all the way up to the hip socket. And from the front, let's make sure the body gives us permission. As you inhale, drop your belly, looking up. Exhale, round your spine, chin to your chest. And inhale, dropping your belly. Exhale, round. We're almost there. We can stay here. You don't have to come higher. You can drop your leg back down. Again, nobody is watching you. You don't have to um, conform to what you think is the right pose for the whole class. It's just you. So I want you to go ahead, come on up. Make sure that we don't rotate. Stay forward as you take your arm up. Maybe pat your back. And we'll release. Here comes the fun part. Can someone find it? You're going to curl your back toes under. Push your hips back. Lifting up. Maybe a downward facing dog to start with. Dog in a tree. And we might come up a little bit further. Anchoring down. I'm really taking my time. Left arm comes up, reaching your left knee away from you. Give yourself a pat on the back. And we'll slowly release all the way back down. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I want you to walk back out. That downward facing dog. Up high on your tiptoe. Slowly and controlled come all the way down. And we might sit back. Oh. Coming back up. We'll slide it out. Maybe give it a kick. Oh. And we'll rock the hips from side to side. That's a lot, you guys. Let's go ahead and drop the hips again. Coming back to center. So, from here, what I want you to do is just take your right leg, just trying to get it low to the edge of your mat, your blanket, your rug, whatever you're using. Your opposite leg, your left leg, you're going to bring your ankle up close to the knee. And you can stay here again, even though we've been working the hips a, a good bit, if you're really tight, this is for you. Stay here. And actually, it's kind of nice, just giving it a little pull in. We feel that a little bit more. If you are comfortable and want more, keep your feet flexed. We're going to try to walk out to where you've got ankle to knee, knee to ankle. Lift your heart. Hands come behind you. Yeah, lift your heart. Shoulders back and down. We can just stay here. This is good. Or press down, lift your hips. Oh, I was hoping I was going to cry. We'll release it right back down, lifting your heart. You're going to hinge forward, belly forward. Take your hands to your feet. Push your hands into your feet. Push your feet against your hands. Oh, there's the back side again. Raising your face, your chest. We've got our fire log. We're going to change the logs. So you might lift, take in your left shin parallel to the edge of your mat, blanket, or carpet. Ankle to knee. You can, again, stay here or bring knee to ankle. Keeping your feet flexed, shoulders back and down, hands behind you. Lift your heart. Push your shins towards the floor as you lift up. And right back down. Keep your heart lifted. Hands to the feet. Push your hands towards your feet. Push your feet towards your hands. Squeeze. 
Oh, the backside's opening up again. Woo! Tight on the side. So we're gonna slowly come back up. And we'll reach the legs out, and then we'll rock it in and out. Just noticing again how your body is feeling. Ooh, feeling good. Let's go ahead, crossing your right ankle over your left thigh, hiding in. Try to bring the crook of your elbow to that thigh. Make sure we're not rounding. Lift tall. Lace your fingers together. As you twist, pull it in. Push through your bottom heel. Pull again, the hip, the glute. And we'll release. Second side. Bringing your left knee in. Take it over, your foot over your right leg. And hug that in. Or you can take the crook of your elbow around the leg. Place your fingers together. Tall spine. As you twist. Feeling that pull on the glute. Full deep breaths. We'll slowly release. Ah, shaking it out. <laughs> okay, from here, I want you to go ahead, extending through your feet. And flex. Reaching through. So we can keep it flex, you can reach through, we just don't want dead weight. But I want you to reach forward, scoop your tailbone and you're going to start to roll down the spine. Let me turn to the side so I can see you, make sure you're doing it. Taking your arms up and overhead. Reaching through the balls of the feet. And we'll press the lower back into the earth. Now, after everything that we've done, this might feel incredible to you, but if you've got issues with the sacroiliac joints, um, if you just have some issues and this hurts to, to lay flat on your back, what you can do is if, if you have a bolster or a pillow uh, at home, you can put it underneath your legs. Let's say that you don't have that and you're still just a little sensitive. I'll show you. Well, another fun part about being at home what we could do is come to a chair or a couch. Bring your bottom really close to it. Legs up the couch. Oh, and it feels so nice to the back. So we could stay here. Really, you just want to find what works the best for you today. So I want you to take your arms wherever you are, whether you're on the floor with the um, a bolster underneath you with a chair, couch underneath you, but you're going to turn your palms to face the ceiling. Walk your shoulder blades closer together underneath you so that your chest is broad. Don't you close your eyes and allow the weight of the body to drop into the earth. Full deep breaths. Listening to the sounds of the breath. It sounds just like the ebb and flow of ocean waves. So though you might be stuck at home, in your mind you could be at the shore. you continue to stay here, staying connected to the sounds of the body, sorry, the sounds of the breath, hopefully not the sounds of the body, the feel of the body, the sounds of the breath. We're open. Your palms are facing the ceiling, your shoulders roll back and down so that we're opening the chest for a deeper breath. 
as you close your eyes, stay connected to what's going on. I know that it can be a little anxious what we're going through, being confined, we're only going out for certain things. Life is a little crazy right now. It can cause anxiety. It can cause panic attack. Just that feel that the feeling that we don't have control that we normally did. So I want you to focus on your five senses. Whether it's just in Shavasana, which is what we're going to practice right now, but any time if you're starting to feel a little panicky, what do you feel underneath you right now? Feel the texture of your mat, your blanket, the carpet. Maybe the hardness of the floor underneath you. Maybe pay attention to the temperature of the air around you, whether you've got the heat on, the air on, or a window open. What do you feel? What do you hear? And it could be you can hear the air conditioning or the heating system. Maybe you hear the creaking of your house, music, the sounds of your breath. What do you smell? You know, smell is so closely connected to memory. And we know that when we come home, when we've had a really hard day, we've just been really uh, anxious, upset, the smell of home is inviting and soothes you. So what do you smell right now? What do you taste? Whether it's your toothpaste, remnants of coffee, breakfast. When you, even though our eyes hopefully are closed, when you're having a panic attack, what can you see? Just trying to focus on one object. It begins to ground us so we're like, okay, I can handle this, I can do this. And hopefully that panic attack, that anxiety attack goes away faster or we curve it all together. What are you thankful for today in your body? And it might just be that your heart is still beating, that your lungs are working, that your blood is pumping. You might be really thankful that you really just love this one freckle, your pinky toe, what are you thankful for in your home? Maybe it's the roof over your head. Maybe it's your windows. What are you thankful for in your family? I know that Everybody's at home, all cramped, all piled up on one another. It can feel a little smothering. So what is it that you're thankful for about your family? What do you love about them? The sounds of their laughter? When they get really excited about something? Just quiet moments where you're just being together, not even having to do anything. And again, we can change our perspective when we're feeling trapped, when we're feeling that we have no control. Begin to focus again on what we do have. I'm gonna ask you to take a cleansing breath as you wiggle your fingers, your toes. On your next inhalation, take your arms up and overhead as you reach from your fingertips to your toes. Pressing your middle lower back into the earth, bending your knees, bringing your feet to the floor. And you might roll to one side, pushing your way up, or you might even rock up. It just depends on how you're feeling today. But I want you 
once you do, when you come to your comfortable seated position, let your body get heavy again, grounding, claiming your space. And that's one of the most important things that we can do for ourselves is to be grounded. When we're feeling frustrated, scared, anxious, we tense up and pull our weight up. Let it drop back down so that you're claiming your space. And all of a sudden we feel like, okay, I can do this. Go ahead and take your hands just over your heart. Maybe feeling the beating of your heart, the warmth of your hands. We'll take all that you're worried about, frustrations, anxieties. And imagine that you're pulling it from your body into your hands. Take your hands away from your heart like you're holding all of that worry, that fear, that panic, the anxiety. And give it to something greater. Give it to God. Taking your arms up. Let go of it. Bowing your head towards your heart. Take the right ear to the right shoulder. Bringing your chin back to your chest. Left ear to the left shoulder. Chin to your chest. Bringing your head upright. You're going to bring your hands back together in Anjali Mudra prayer. And we'll set an intention for the rest of the day. May we feel grounded, noticing what we can touch, the sounds around us, the tastes, the smells, the sights. And even if it's just your couch, maybe you open your window if it's too rainy to go outside, just let in the smell of the rain. Let in a little bit more light, even though it's a little cloudy today. Keeping a little bit of peace as we give, offer up our anxieties to something greater. Letting go of the need to be perfect. And just be present. And thank you so much for joining me again this morning. Hope you have a beautiful Monday. Namaste.